Basketball is my life. I have nothing else. This is incredible. This is the best yeah. game football I've ever heard. Shooters. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> Shooters, a basketball podcast. Let's go. Welcome to 2024. Shooters, we're, we're, we're the same as 2023, but 2024, but it just feels like a... I don't know, a good year for everyone because it's that classic thing as soon as a year takes over, people are like, I'm going to change, I'm going to do this. But sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm glad to be talking to you on the second of this year. But I don't know, how are you doing? What are you, what are you, where, where do you want to start, hey? Where do we want to start? Well, we'll start breaking down this episode because we've decided to do a little bit of a different episode today with the chaos of the NBL schedule. And what I mean by that is, people playing games every single night. We're yeah. going to do more of a New Year's celebration episode, talking about some of our goals, what we want this year to be like. Uh, a lot of listener questions, our regular hype up, grateful for if we have one. I'm not sure if Darren does. <laughs> and then just a couple NBL talking points. So let's start it off. Darren, tell me about your kind of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. What was, what kind of, how did yours go down? Mm, I would love to. Well, we so New Year's Eve was just a barbecue at my friend's place, just a nice casual thing. Just some did Chris Kringle. There was about I think I said in previous episodes. I feel like we had like five or six of them, but always nice to exchange gifts. I actually got a funny story about that later. But um, and then New Year's Day, yes, yeah, so that was just a chill barbecue, drinks, games, that that typical thing. And then um, New Year's Day, we went up to Rye with Jess's uh, family. So everyone kind of just gathered up there, um, nice beach location up there. And yeah, it was just a chill day. We kind of got there in the afternoon, so not an early start, which was good, but just nice casual. Everyone in the pool, everyone playing basketball. I showed uh, Jess's little cousin how to, I don't know, showed, a, showed him uh, some moves out there, but it was fun to actually just play basketball again because I haven't played in a while. But um, how was your New Year's? You said you, your family's down, so that's always nice. Well, first off, Coach Darren in the making. I like mm. it. I like it. Jack Jumpers, maybe you could come along. Coach us, give us some tips. You know? um, but my New Year's was good. My my parents are down at the moment, all the way from northern New South Wales. A lot of people <laughs> think I'm from Adelaide. I've gotten that a couple of times. Me and my parents have gotten that a couple of times over this last uh, 48 hours. Darren himself. <laughs> I just said it as well. Guilty. Yeah, hundred percent. So we go, we'll get that out of the way, uh, and I forgive you. Uh, right. But they're down. So it was the night before the game, New Year's Eve. We went out on the. Uh, it's kind of like a beautiful wharf, Hobart Wharf. So we went and got some seafood, kind of there. Sat, chat, had a great dinner. Watched the nine thirty fireworks because I got a game the next day. Yeah. I uh, don't have the uh, the odd, you know, can't stay up to the twelve o'clock ones. Good sleep, but. I am a romantic, so I did set my alarm for 12.25 because uh, Eastern time, Adelaide's 30, 30 oh. minutes behind. And we did, uh, so I did greet the new year uh, with Beth on FaceTime. Yay, long distance relationships. But <laughs> that, that's how it goes. That was my yeah. cute romantic gesture. Um, that is smooth. And- I like that. Yeah, yeah. So that was nice. And that was nice. And then New Year's Day, we had the game. and, and But it's been nice just hanging out with some family. Mm, yeah, no, I, I'm, I was I was glad when you said your family was down just because, you know, family time is great around this time of year. Um, let's talk about the game. I'll admit, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see the game. Um, I don't even know if you want to talk about the game, but we're going to, I'm going to force it out of you. But um, how was it out there? A clearly close game. Um, I know you were kicking yourself on a few missed layups down the stretch, which I once I asked Jack to pretty much give me a summary of the last bit and he kindly did but he was more just blaming himself a bit but I actually went back and watched those those layups but um yeah talk us through it yeah it was a it was a really high level game of basketball it was yeah. uh, a great game like you know at halftime it's 40 all it's a good battle I think New Zealand uh I love Jeremy L- uh, Lamb he is He's hooping, he's tough to guard, offensive threat, and then Cartwright's a beast. And so it was a fun game to be part of. We're down in the fourth quarter. Uh, we bring it back up five. I, I missed a putback dunk and some, a putback <laughs> layup and another layup uh, to kind of like seal the game or put us in a good position, which hurt. Uh, and then they end up coming away with a win with uh, Cartwright doing some things uh, down the stretch and, and coming up clutch. But you know, it's a, it was a tough one at home. The crowd was jumping. It was probably the loudest I've heard the crowd this season, especially in that little comeback stretch. But, you know, this is this is how it goes. This is what makes the NBL so great. The jack jumpers, uh, you know, a little rough patch in the last month, but we haven't lost a game by more than eight points this entire mm. season. So it's just 
clean up a few small things at the end. We're heading in the right direction. We're going to continue to improve. And then obviously there was Shawnee Mack doing Shawnee Mack things with it. The game of his career yeah. off the bench. Seven threes, which I'm going to need someone to fact check if that's the most made in a game by a jack jumper. I was I was actually, well, I was thinking the most off the bench. Uh, like it has to be some sort of record, right? Like I don't know who hit seven threes off the bench in the NBL that often or how many times it's been done. Maybe, maybe I'll have to go back and look through our little stat archive because I'm sure he's one of the only ones that's done it. So I was that was definitely the thing that popped out on the box score when I looked at it after the game. I also liked your little stat line. I think you're like 17, 7, and 5. So, you know, triple double is going to happen one day, I'm sure. That's what I'm calling. Um, well, we're already in basketball, so we might as well stay in basketball for a bit. Um, then we can end on some nice news, resolutions, and goals and stuff. But that leads nicely onto New Zealand. They just they've found a bit of a groove now. I think that's four in a row with them and. Um, I always like Modi Mayor. I don't know. There's something about him. He kind of seems like a tough nut and a bit of a different kind of character. But I reckon if he gave me a speech before the game, I'd just run through the wall for him. I don't know why. I feel like there's something about him that I really like. Yeah, well, let's like the season is tough, and yeah. they have they had two disadvantages. One is I still believe the NBA game going over there when season starts is tough, while yeah. NBL guys are finding their groove, playing NBL games in the flow of it. You're over there using a different basketball, playing a different style of game, uh, not getting those game reps, which obviously improve a team a lot. And then secondly, they've had a lot of injuries. Even now, Finn Delaney's on the bench, yeah. uh, hurt. Uh, you know, their star, Cheatham. You have a whole preseason with uh, Jessup, who then goes down. And, and so right now, they're one of the toughest teams to play against, four in a row for a reason, and uh, they're, they're looking good. Yeah, they are. And they're only one win away from 0.500, which is just, I don't know, it sounds weird because like to me, they're one of the teams that everyone's like, ah, oh, damn, they're struggling so much. But we've said this time and time again, how people are riding Perth off and they're fine now and people are riding Sydney off at times and they're fine. Like, it's just, like you said, it's a long season. And, and I actually still get impressed. Even the longer I be at the NBL, we always say anyone can win on every, any given night, but it's so true. Like I was looking at some of those scores over Christmas and New Year's and one of our listeners actually said um, if, if they feel like it's one of the closest periods during that time of like, in terms of like the box scores and the end, end result and stuff. But yeah, anyone can literally win on any given night. So it's kind of fun to see how the season just continues to play out because you really don't know what's going to happen. 100%. I mean, you're on the money. It feels like we say it all the time. It feels like a generic thing, but it really is any team can win and it's yeah. what makes this league so special. Look at the LOR Hawks right now. They're, 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 you see the stats that the NBL puts up. They're lead, leading the league defensively since they got the new coach. Uh, what's their record? Four and one? I think it's four and one, yeah. Four, four and one, and so which is the best one of the best in the league since he's changed. So, I think so. right now you got a team that, T uh, people were riding off bottom of the ladder and now they're playing high level basketball that can beat anyone in the league uh, and who knows if they keep playing like this they could be pushing for a playoff spot mm. and I put a little I put a post up today on our socials just about um, that little debate between me and you about whether the players or the coach deserve more credit but I'm actually curious what people actually think so whether it's just commenting on that or just commenting on the Spotify you can actually submit little questions and answers on Spotify but I'm curious what people think whether they're yeah, on more Jack's side, your side about um, maybe it's purely the coach or whether maybe the players actually do deserve more credit. So it's, a, it's an interesting one. Um, I had two quick points um, that I just wanted to bring up. Trey Cowell, triple-double. We were talking about triple-double before. Um, with all due respect, I would not have guessed him being the one that's get, that gets this season first triple-double. But shout-out to him. First one in the NBL since uh, January 2023. Xavier Cooks was the last one, apparently. Wow, that's impressive. I mean... Mm. It feels like there was this weird period in basketball where Russell Westbrook was grabbing triple doubles, where guys like Giannis, MB, Josh Giddy was coming through the NBL, got a couple yeah. uh, triple doubles in the NBL that people were almost like riding off the triple double. Yeah, uh, they were talking yeah. about like, is it easy a point, a player's pa stat padding? Are they trying to get these stats and has it lost its effect? But I don't think that's true at all. I just think Russell Westbrook was a freak. Yeah. Uh, an incredible basketball player that managed to kind of get these triple doubles in the NBA that made people not appreciate them as much as what they are. To say that's the first one since January, Xavier Cooks, that's uh, tough to do. Maybe yeah. one day I can be chasing one. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to learn how to pass a little better and <laughs> grab a couple more rebounds, but hey, crazier things have happened, hey? 
They have, they have. Uh, let's just, what, yeah, lucky what you said. People just, athletes normalize things and then fans are just like, they just count them off and start coming out with these things like stat padding and stuff. But um, next one, Cairns. I don't know what it is, but Cairns are the only, I'm pretty sure Cairns would be the only team to beat Melbourne twice this year, considering Melbourne have only lost like four or five times. But I don't know what it is about them, but they beat them damn comfortably. Um, I didn't get to catch that, that game properly, but... Just weird when you don't know what to expect, but Cairns are that up and down team, which I don't, I don't know what to expect from them. They're fun most of the time, but other times they're a bit careless with turnovers and stuff. And who knows? I don't, I don't know anymore. Who knows? I tell you one thing we might know though was Patrick Miller calling himself MVP candidate yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and he put out another big performance to beat Melbourne. And to beat Melbourne right now means you're no joke. Uh, they're playing well. They the best defensive team in the league. So you have to be playing well on the offensive side of the end. They're not going to give you any free wins. Uh, Kings shot the ball well. Uh, the rookie went crazy. He had 22 and 11 yeah. for Cairns. And, and uh, so there was a couple of things that went their way. And I tell you what, it's going to be a dogfight this weekend. Jackies versus Cairns in a, in a very big game uh, yeah. down, at, down in Hobart. That is, uh, you know, Jack Jumpers is a big game, big win. And that's going to be fun basketball to watch. It will be. It will be. Oh, that that was it for my basketball. Po- Unless there's any other basketball points you'd like to talk about, let's let's talk about some news stuff. I always like talking about goals, and I even had um, I checked my notes last year. Well, like at the start of this year, is in what my 2023 goals were. Just interesting where you come from on that. Um, but start us off. Do you do you make really specific goals, or do you are you like kind of broad? I don't really know what to make from you. I reckon you'd make some sort of goals pretty specifically, but you might surprise me. I've definitely got a list of goals. Beth and I help each other, keep each other accountable to them. I got some habits, some big goals. Um, but definitely, I, I love the idea. I know people kind of laugh about the whole New Year's resolution thing and it doesn't last. And that is true. A lot of times it won't last. But if you can get one thing to stick to make a little upgrade, or if out of the 10 years you try and set a new goal and you use the new year to start some motivation or inspire a little bit of change then why not use that uh that first as as a way to do it and and i don't care what anyone says there is a different feeling when you wake up on the first inspired ready to go and and you can get that that momentum rolling get those habits going and and who knows uh where the where the new year could take you it's true and it's just like it's almost like a reason to actually start implementing those changes like you joke about yeah it ticks over why can't you just do it in the middle of march like you can technically but it's just a reason everyone else is sort of talking about it everyone else is talking about the new year ticking over so it's just like a kick in the butt to do something about it so um it's fun but i was gonna say i'm just gonna do you want me to start reading off some of mine or you, you want to go first i would i would love for you to start reading yours please sir all right, I reckon one that will resonate with you. You're already into it, but I just want to read more. I don't know, reading reading feels wholesome. It feels like, and you're just not staring at a screen for once in my life. I feel like you're always just staring at screens. So I definitely want to read more, even though I feel like I said that to myself halfway through this year. But it's just about making that time, even if it's literally like a couple of pages a day. It's just like it feels better than staring at a screen before bed. Um, that's definitely one. And the other one, the other, there was two main ones. So that was one... Um, I kind of wrote down reading and writing. I've started to write a bit more. That's that's enjoyable as well. But the other one was fitness. I just want to get fit again because I've stopped playing like social basketball. So I just want to find that. Maybe it's not even finding that outlet that's like quote unquote enjoyable because maybe it's just not that enjoyable, but you definitely enjoy it after it's done kind of thing, if you get me. So those are the two main ones. Um, I've got a f- few other smaller ones, but just getting fit in some some way. Well, I love it. I love it. The reading. Uh, do you have kind of a set goal on how much you want to read? Is it a book a month? I know a lot of people go the book a month is a certain amount of day, a page a day. Um, mm. or, or have you thought into those details? Because what they say is if you are, uh, this is some, this is some goal, goal teaching for <laughs> people want it. They want to set goals and create goals and plans is they say the more specific you make it, the easier it is to follow it. So like mm. a great one is, like, and if you can make it daily, then it's even better. So you can do something really simple, like a page a day, one page. And the days that you feel like reading more, you're going to read more. And the days yeah. you really don't want to, you're going to read one page, no matter what. That's a, an example of what you can yeah. do. And then, so the fitness one, you might say, I want to do 20 minutes of exercise a day or four times a week, I have to exercise or something. I'm just, yeah. you know, making up numbers or whatever, but that's something to think about. 
No, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because then, especially when it's starting small, because I was actually going to just say, yeah, literally like a couple of pages a day because normally when I read is right before bed and I'm not going to lie, sometimes I literally fall asleep. Like I, I've got the book in my hand and I'll just, Jess turns over and <laughs> she's like, oh, he's out. But um, yeah, so literally, oh yeah, even if you say like three, five pages, that, that will do me per day because as long as I'm picking up that book, I reckon that's ticking a box in my eyes. Yep, I like it. What have you been reading is the question. What's putting you to sleep with the book in your uh, book in your arms? What have you been enjoying reading or is there any books? Like what type of genre are you into? I like to think it's not a reflection on the book that I'm falling asleep, but I've, I've just gone into those, the, the typical ones like Atomic Habits and I mentioned like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, just like those sort of, uh, I don't know, self-help or different mindsets on different things in life, kind of just interesting to read about, but I don't know, maybe the fact that I'm falling asleep quickly is maybe I should change my tune a bit. But I actually enjoy, I, I know I enjoy those styles. So I don't think it's that. Maybe just start a bit earlier or something, something along those lines. I like it. I like it. Well, I would love to hear your other small uh, goals mm. if, you'd, if you'd like to share them. Definitely, definitely. What do I have? Um, oh, you're just like the, yeah. So we mentioned um, just like interviewing athletes a bit more like the, even on this and then the article I did the other week of uh, Harrison Hornery, the USC kid as well. Um, I just actually finished writing up a one on Izzy Bollet's, like the WNBL um, Adelaide Lightning. So she'll, she's like number 12 on the ESPN WNBA mock draft. So she obviously has a big future, um, yeah, playing in Adelaide. So just just actually talking to athletes like that and getting to know them a bit and writing articles and that, w- that will go on the WNBA website as well. So that was one. Um, I had a very specific one that I was just like, be happier in the moment because too often when I choose to do something, I then think about what I, what I could be doing instead of that. So like, even if it's something as simple as like, I'm going to choose to watch a full NBA game. And then if I actually do that, I'm just like, damn, I could have used that time to, I don't know, do house chores or spend more time with Jess or something. But I wrote here literally, um, yeah, like choose what you're doing in the moment and then just make up for other stuff after it's done because you obviously enjoy it a bit more. But that was a very specific one. I like that one. And I think that that is one a lot of like, go get it. People can relate to. Yeah. Uh, there's like, we're in that constant balance of finding like enjoying what you're doing or beating yourself up and saying, I should have been working harder. I should have been yeah. doing more. I could have done this better or the, the good old, you trick yourself into hindsight of I could have done this better like <laughs> this, or I wish I did that. But you can only reflect on that with the current knowledge you have or the experience from which you, you know, you just got from what, what it is. So I think that's one, a lot of go get it people can relate to. And yeah. it's, so it's like saying, if I'm going to sit down and uh, watch a movie, uh, I'm going to just, just enjoy it. that movie. Yeah, it's it's a tricky balance because like your mind's just thinking about other things sometimes and you're like, no, insert yourself in this moment. Um, the last one was just, I've actually had this pretty much every year, but just spend more time with Jess doing like hikes and stuff. Like we used to go out a fair bit on weekends and take the camera around, get out of nature rather than, like I said, just stare at screens. So that's kind of just like an ongoing one every year, to be honest. Nice, nice. Well, I appreciate you sharing because I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna hold you accountable to some of these, Please. you know, because that's what good friends are for. You it's know, true, because actually. I, I can throw all the goal studies at you. It goes yeah. to show that telling your goals out loud uh, to people makes you less likely to achieve them. Because less like- yes, less likely because you get that dopamine and that satisfaction and that feeling, that bravery of which it took to tell your goals. Uh, it makes you less likely to perform them because you feel like you've already achieved them. Oh, so really? I made a mistake. Your, <laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's all right. Because if you tell your goals to someone that helps hold you accountable, someone you respect, then oh, it you does go. increase the chances of making those goals ha- happen. So that's why you need an accountability buddy or someone like that or a good friend that's going to check in every now and then saying how those goals go and get your ass back on track. <laughs> and that helps you uh, achieve those goals. I was like, I was like, what have I done? Am I hearing him correctly that I'm less likely? But no, that makes sense. I'm glad you followed it up with that one. I got you. I got you. Where would you like to hear my goals? Please, one by one, and then I'll respond to them. That sounds good. Uh, nice. Well, I've, I've actually separated mine into uh, two different categories. I've got goals and then habits. So I'll just run mm. through the whole list. Yep. Goals. The first goal is to start my online business. Uh, set that up, get that running and have some fun with that this year. Yeah. Se- the second goal is move in with Beth and, and kind of start that. 
life together, which will be fun. That involves getting married and all that stuff. Then my third goal is to get the, the house loan down to a certain amount. So saving some money, organizing yep. that. And then my last kind of goal is to, to get a through the legs dunk this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Love it. So, yeah. So they're, they're the ones. And then I got my habits, which is to build a night a nighttime routine, which is going to be no phones in bed this year for me. Yes. Uh, and then a five minute, just like a, not even a five minute, like a one to five minute reflection on a quick journal. Like how was today? Was it good? Yeah. Write every day for 10 minutes, which yeah. has been a tick. Send 52 emails. So what that means is I want to <laughs> do a Monday with McVeigh every, every, uh, every, every Monday this year. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I, yeah. I was about to say, how do you land on 52? But don't worry. I've, I've worked it out. Intel yeah. a bunch. Yeah. There you go. I want to start a little trend for me because Beth does such a great job with keeping in touch with friends and, and, you know, being that social kind of butterfly and holding relationships and stuff. And I'm pretty useless. So this year I'm going to, I'm going to try and send birthday letters with a book to, to friends for their birthdays. Wow. There so go. I'm going to, yeah, at the start of each month, go buy some letters, write, write my friends a nice letter and send it to them with a book as a little present for their birthdays. So that's something I'd like to do this year. That's nice. I like the um, variety of things you just mentioned. You covered a lot of bases there. Um, yeah. I was going to say, for for the sake of your like your online business, where are you? Like I've heard a fair bit of times like you've mentioned it and stuff, but like like where are you at with that? Like your is the app almost like live, ready? Are you ready to go yeah, with that? So yeah. Pretty much the entire app is created. It is done. Now I'm just putting content into it. So yeah. what does that mean in the app? Like I have to go film the basketball workouts, design the programs, uh, and then edit them, talk about all of like kind of the exercises in the programs. And so the app is done and dusted. Now I'm just kind of inserting the programs, inserting the workouts, inserting the kind of meditations, uh, and, and, and all of that stuff is where it's at. But my goal with that is by the end of this month, end of January, that the app is going to be up and about and uh, it's going to be running. I like it. I like it. Now, for the sake of someone who's, I've kind of, I've sometimes um, Googled like how you would go about developing an app. Have you done it all yourself and like what uh, like software or website have you actually used? Mm, so I paid a software. Uh, I, yeah, pay, I right. kind of paid for a software. And with that software comes people online that, uh, help me help me make it and and it hasn't got a crazy amount of freedom in terms of what you can do a little bit but you kind of work within their walls uh mm. to kind of build your app and so it was a little bit of money for sure like i pay monthly um yeah. to have to have it and uh then yeah so i'll be working with some people online we get jump on a zoom help make it ask questions and then go go do your thing Mm. Oh, that's cool because I've often wondered because like there, there are sites online that's pretty, pretty much just says you can build an app for free and just like do it all yourself and I'm like I wonder how like one how customizable that is or how realistic that is to actually literally do it all yourself but it's interesting I look forward Good. to having a scroll and seeing how it actually works I appreciate it I appreciate it then mm. I've got two more to mm. finish up my Please. habits uh, I you know I'm doing no sugar except uh, special special occasions, which is like birthdays, anniversaries, stuff like that. Yep. Um, and then continue to improve life skills. And these life skills consist of going to the dentist, yes. uh, staying on top of my taxes, yes. uh, paying parking fines when parking fines are due, <laughs> and then organizing random things efficiently. Wow, a dentist! I got a. I've literally got a to-do list, and part of them is just like dentist. The other one is go for, like go back to the um, optometrist as well. They say I'm apparently due for a checkup, so it is bloody. I don't know. It's hard to literally do that stuff because you just nobody's motivated to do that stuff. But then once you don't, or once you keep putting it off, you just feel worse and worse. And you're like, wait, what if there is more issue? Like there is more issues than I realize, and I'm actually costing myself a hell of a lot more money by not going. So I get you there. I get you. Yep, nice. And so that is all of mine. I know mine's pretty extensive. It doesn't look that crazy on a piece of paper because they're yeah. kind of all bundled together. But some of them I know I'm not going to stick with, and some of yep. them I am. And that's kind of how this thing goes. If I <laughs> splat some paint on a wall, some of it's going to look nice, some of it's going to look ugly. Some of them I'm going to be happy at the end of the year and say they helped me improve. And some of them I'm going to go, ha. I was an idiot thinking gotcha. I would be able to do that. Gotcha. What's the one you're literally most scared of? Like, what's the one you're actually most scared or like that gives you the most trouble, you reckon, to tick it off? 
No, if I actually send birthday letters and books to friends, I'll be so <laughs> impressed with myself. But I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to try and do it. Um, I'll be uh, 52 emails is always a tough one. Um, I'm probably yeah. most excited for my nighttime routine because I've always like the the the, the doom scrolling, the mindless scrolling. It yeah. just always gets it gets me once a week. Like and yes. so I'm pretty good, but then the once a week I'm like far out. Yeah. So. I'm excited to knock that one in the bud and say that's part of who I am is that nighttime routine. I still, I still, the other day, it reminded me of the other day. I literally was just that classic. Like I just open, I don't know, like TikTok is almost like my last app that I'm like, if I'm like really bored or I feel like I've whatever, use my phone too much, I'll go on it. And I did the other day and I was just like, you just, you just almost literally like black out and then you look up and you're just like, what the hell have I been doing for the past like 15 minutes? And you literally just like, it must be so weird to look for, look at from the side if you actually just paid attention to someone. You're like, you have no idea about your surroundings, but it's hard to break out of. It is hard. Well, I've tried all the things and I know now that discipline is not good enough to do it consistently. So I have to fix my environment and that is by just putting my phone physically away from the bed, putting my charger away from the bed, buying an alarm clock that wakes me up in the morning and saying, this is how I'm going to do it from now on. Mm, I like that. I like that. There's all these things you kind of try and you're like, wait, what will actually work best for me? But hey, I wish you luck. Good luck with all that stuff. Good luck as well, sir. I appreciate you. Have you got some hype ups? Do you have some grateful fours or do we want to jump straight into the listener questions? Well, I've actually got nothing on that front. It's been it's been busy. It's been very busy. And um, I think I've clocked my last social activity. Actually, apparently we're hosting dinner tonight for a few friends. But hey, that's all right. We'll take that one over as well. Um, but no, I don't have a grateful or four or hype up this week just because I like the whole um, going off routine. So unless you do, take it away or we can go to some listener questions. When you said you're hosting dinner tonight, do you mean right oh, tomorrow. now? Like, tomorrow. Like <laughs> tomorrow night. I was going to say, it's not, we're filming yeah. this at nine o'clock. Yeah. On a on a Tuesday because I've been out all day with the parents, so I was about to say that is a late dinner. That's a sleepover. Damn, did I say tonight? That's, yeah, they're just in the other room, and I'm like, sorry guys, I've got a strict schedule here. Uh, podcast recording. No, they aren't in. My guests are not in the other room. Tomorrow night is the go. So, but it's just two of them. So I'm sure we can manage that. Well, let's jump into these beautiful lesson, listener yeah. questions. And we really do appreciate you guys shooting out. We love getting asked questions. We love answering them, and hopefully, you guys enjoy listening and to some of them mm, for sure so the first one was how much did you both enjoy the close games i referenced this before but just the close games over the christmas period but it's funny because i didn't get to watch a heap i'm not gonna lie there was a lot going on i try to watch much but as i was saying before i just like the fact that you can literally say that whole you never know who's going to win on any given night and the fact that that rang true there was a lot of close games as well um that's it i can't answer that question any further I personally did not enjoy the close games because <laughs> I lost one of the close games True. and then I was over basketball for the night. So I didn't watch the next <laughs> game because I was getting me away from basketball after a loss. So I did That's not right. enjoy the close games over Christmas Day. All right. Why are you asking no. me such personal questions? Come on now. That's a fair That's a fair point. I always say close games are good game. That's all. often all I'm looking for in the NBL because, you know, just playing the mutual field. Um, can we please get Jared Bairstow on the pod? Well, that's a question for you. I would love to have Jared Bairstow on the pod. He'd jump on any time. Good yeah. friend. We're currently doing major landscaping project in my nice. backyard together. How did that go? How did the first day of that go? I, I, unless you just went to Bunnings. I don't know. But it's good. We've built a retaining wall. We're getting a digger in to, right. to flatten out the uh, the backyard. It's, 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 we've been working hard and it's, and it's looking sharp. Love it. Love it. Love to see it or hear about it. Um, I actually like this one. Um, bit Maybe it touched on what we were talking about before, but what was your most satisfying 2023 personal achievement? And none of us can say engagement or buying a house. I like that. Well... I'll start us off since mine comes ahead. And, and for me, it was definitely training my younger brother and helping him get a Division One scholarship. Mm. So we yep. put in the work. Uh, he was working hard. I was kind of his coach, mentor, and we made it happen. And he went from someone with no scholarship offers to having about 10 scholarship offers and uh, being able to choose from that and getting over to America. So that's definitely been my most satisfying uh, 2023 personal achievement. Love it. Shout out Lloyd. I was actually, I was thinking about this one from my point of view and it was hard. I, I even said to Jess, I'm just like, what have I achieved last year? But um, I was looking at my 2023 goals and the one thing I'm glad I stuck to, I just basically wrote down um, 
my six to nine before nine to six kind of thing because my work hours are technically nine to six. So I just wanted to make the most of my time before work. So so every morning before work, I just woke up at six and my six to nine was sort of my time to do whatever I wanted, like the, the side hustles, this podcast, that type of stuff. Um, and I pretty much stuck to that the whole year. So not a massive achievement, but I was just glad that I did it because it's if you have that much more time in the day, you can obviously do a lot more things, funny enough. I tell you what, that is a massive achievement. And uh, the daily habit achievements are the ones, you know, that, that's what we were talking about with setting the goals, setting the habits, because they're the ones that they do a podcast, work an incredible yeah. job, visit Germany, uh, start <laughs> your own business with your brother. So, you sure. know, all those things come down to you uh, waking up at six o'clock and uh, checking in to, to have your own time in the morning. They do help. They do help. Um, this one, I, I, actually a question more directed to me, which was not like, well, surprise, I liked it. Um, yeah. Jimstagrand, yeah. I think is his Instagram name. He, he was just basically like, I'm fascinated to hear about what goes into NBL storylines and what is the process behind the storyline creation. And that, that was kind of like an interesting question because it almost makes it seem like we literally just make up storylines. But we do actually have like a storylines meeting every week, but it's pretty much it's pretty much just like everyone bringing their own thoughts to the table about things we've seen on the weekend, um, storylines from games, who's playing well, who's not, all the off-court stuff as well. And then, yeah, there's no real... We we don't make up storylines, obviously, but it's just more grabbing onto stuff that people have seen or heard and then, yeah, basically putting it to people's attention to see if, if, it, if it creates good discussion and good content and that stuff. But um, I just like all of us getting into a room together, to be honest. It's just kind of like a good way to see what you might have missed or other people's opinions on stuff. So I, I, I like that question, though. Yeah, that is a great question. Um so do you have to get your storylines like ticked or do you create them and then send them into a big bad boss no it's, it's more just like a discussion like i'll like it's basically a monday or tuesday meeting and then everyone just hops on a zoom and just basically it's just like a discussion and then whatever comes from that um will kind of just like it's it involves like the um broadcast people as well like jam tv would do all our broadcast so it involves people from them and yeah it's just basically and it's 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 i think a big part of it is is to make sure the digital team the nbl team the broadcast team they're all on the same page like it's not just i don't know people posting on social media one thing and then the broadcast is posting another one that doesn't really line up so like we're all a team so you have to kind of post consistently and talk about consistent things to make the this whole thing work as well as possible really I love that. I love that. And then the last question is, uh, Darren, you have a question yes. for me? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, no. I, so speaking of newsletters, did I read correctly in your latest one that you are a fan of storms or storm chasing? Is that yeah, correct? Uh, that is correct. Now, I just want to... So we actually... You probably can't see behind me because it looks pitch black, but Melbourne just had a big bloody storm and it was loud and I was like this doesn't make me feel very uh, easy. Like, it makes me feel a bit uneasy. I wasn't going to lie. It was loud. I don't know whether it was just we were in the eye of the storm or something, but it was loud. It was Our house even shook a bit, and I was like, okay. But what makes us... What, like, so you actually literally just enjoy, I don't know, just watching storms, looking for storms, being in a storm? Well, first off, I'm a, I'm a northern New South Wales boy, and so when you get up there, it's it, the weather's more tropical. Yes. Uh, and, and there are a lot of storms. And so... Now there are there are levels to storms, and like right now, up on the Gold Coast is copping some mean storms, which are like affecting houses. I have a really good friend whose roof got ripped off in a recent hurricane and a storm, and and the flooding, and people are you know people are getting injured, and so I don't love those storms. They're a bit more you know they're the next level, which is causing damage and, and hurting lives. But the little tier below that, yeah. where it's hailing. There's beautiful thunder, the lightning, it's all gone crazy. You feel a little uneasy. It's a little scary, a little bit. You kind of inside, there might be a nice blackout. Uh, the lights go out in your town. You kind of got to light some candles. And I, I got to say, I do I have some fond memories as a kid of my dad chasing us around, scaring <laughs> us, uh, and just fun things like that. And I didn't realize that where I lived, uh, not a a lot of other places don't get regular storms, uh, particularly in summer. And so I do miss some of the beautiful, heavy storms that you sat inside, you told stories, you know, you had to light the candles. And, and uh, I, I do love some storms. There you go. I was just curious because uh, it reminds me of that. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched those shows on like Foxtel a while ago, like literally storm chasers, like people getting in their car and going, yeah. It reminded me of that. I'm like, does Jack look up to those people? Is he one of them at heart? Well, uh, I do know the show you're talking about. I wouldn't yeah. say I love storms that much, but yeah. if they do come across me, I'll definitely be inside enjoying them 
while I'm a little bit scared uh, yeah. and feeling sorry for my dog because, you know, they'd be, they'd be going crazy with the lightning. But I think uh, they're a beautiful part of nature. Mm. Yeah, no, true. It reminds my, my my dad actually literally. I don't know if he still does this, but he used to say when, as soon as there was a storm, he just like went out on the deck and watched it. Just watched it. Watched it with I don't know a coffee in hand or something. Um. Oh, just while before we go, last few things. Um. Do you think I can pull off pink polo shirts? Do you reckon I'm I a pink you, kind of guy? If you if you rock it confidently, I think you can pull off anything. Okay, thank you. Um. Well, some of people clearly think I do because I got two pink polo shirts for Chris Kringles over the past few days, which. It's really quite funny because the first one I was having a long discussion with Jess. I'm like, I feel bad. I'm going to have to take this back because I don't think I can pull off pink. Like it just, I don't know, some colors you're like, ah, it's not my color. Um, and then after we had that discussion, we had a Kris Kringle that night. And lo and behold, the Kris Kringle I pulled out of the bag, nice green polo. Because I asked for polo shirts. That was like just, you know, ones for work, whatever. Nice green one at the bottom of the bag, another pink one. So some people think I can pull it off, but... I'm sorry if anyone's listening to that got me this because I think I'm going to have to return both of them, unfortunately. <laughs> I have to passionately disagree. You really? at least you at least have to put one on and send me a photo in the mirror and uh, let me be a judge before you take them back, all right? Can you do that for me? Maybe. I, I do have a photo. I sent it to Jess. So, yeah, I can just send that same one. Um, but, you know, it's just something about it, so... You know, I just thought I'd share that because I realized I alluded to it earlier in the episode and I always find it funny when you're listening to stuff and they allude to something in the first bit of this episode and then they never come back to it and you're like, hey, what the hell were they talking about? So, you know, just doing my podcast, uh, due diligence. I like that. I like that. Well, I'll end this on a quick little story. Uh, when I was in college, I really loved like Kanye West's music. His albums is related, the struggle, the grind, missing home you know, feeling like you're better than what you are, you know, all that good stuff. Um, yep. But then he used to rock the pink polo with the collar up. So I used to walk around town <laughs> thinking I was swag with the yeah. pink polo, the collar up, little backpack on, trying to be like Kanye West. And I definitely look back and go, wow, I look like a damn fool. <laughs> but at the time, I thought I was looking pretty swaggy. So shout out to the pink polos. There you go. I just, I just want to avoid being like that, to be honest. No, I think you can pull off anything confidently, but... Hey, sometimes you just got to realize your limitations and uh, I don't think pink's my color. But thank you for the great presence, everyone. Um, Happy New Year. Take us away, Jack. Um, I'm glad we have our goals to each other and we can hold each other accountable, even though you told me that it might be less likely um, that I achieve them. But I trust you, so it's more likely. A hundred percent. Now I'm about to go put my phone on the charger, do Yay. five minutes of reflection and then head off to bed because I've had a great day with my family. It's the new year. It's an exciting time to set those goals change some routines make some little improvements and uh you can feel the energy in the air so let's go jack jumpers some big games coming up next week we'll be back with the regular program and it looks like we're gonna have to get jared Versto on the show as well darren it's always a pleasure thank you everyone for listening i hope you guys had a great 2023 it's always a pleasure